Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things could get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming Susan Rutan. You may remember her. She played Roxanne on the classic legal series, L.A. Law, and she was also in some classic um, 80s movies, uh, particularly in horror. She was in the TV um, uh, movie of the week version of Beethoven, and she was also in Bad Dreams with another guest of mine, Jennifer Rubin, and she was also on, also in um, uh, Growing Pains, a.k.a. Bad Manners, the movie with Kimmy Robertson and Bridget Sienna, two other guests of mine, and she's been on a lot of uh, sitcoms and one-hour series, I'm going to have her on the show today to talk about all that stuff. And I can't wait. Also, I'd like to say, uh, watch Coffee 20 Creature Features tonight because um, guest, my guest, um, Eliza Roberts, will be on tonight. And Eliza is awesome. Sweet lady. So, yeah, here is my interview with Susan Rutan. Hey, Susan. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I am well. Thanks. A little chilly, but well. Oh, yeah. We have a little thunder and lightning over here in Reading. Oh, yeah. I mean, I like I love the rain. I grew up in Oregon and Washington. I do love it, but I'm finding that I'm less, I'm less happy in the cold than I once was. Yeah. <laughs> My dad lives in Washington. He's been telling me it's pretty awful there right now. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not complaining really. I'd rather be here than there right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's, it's it's nice to have weather here actually. Yeah, because it can get too hot over there in LA. Mhm. <laughs> it's such an honor. Thank you for taking the time today. Oh sure, it's my pleasure. Awesome, awesome. So. Going back in time, uh, did you gravitate toward acting early on? I'm sorry, <clears throat> I didn't hear that. Did you did you gravitate did you gravitate toward acting early on in your life? Well, no. I mean, I I didn't. Um, I never thought about being an actor um, at all. I didn't know acting was a job. I grew up in really small towns in Oregon, and and. Um, I, I, I didn't honestly. I didn't even think about those people in the television that they were working. Yeah. Um, I remember my little sister once when my dad was working on the television. She started screaming, "Don't let the little people out!" So I guess <laughs> that was that was my reality then. I <laughs> I fell into it. I um, I used to do a lot of sewing. I used to make a lot of costumes for myself. And a friend of mine was going to school in Santa Cruz and. He said, you know, you should go back to school and, and look into, like, the costume design like for shows or, t or theater. I said, oh, I'll try that. So I did. I went back to school, and when I was in school, I was enrolled in the theater program with the technical side. And a friend of mine that I had met there said she was going to an audition, and could I give her a ride? And I said, oh, sure. And um, she ended up talking me into auditioning for the play. She knew the director, and he said, okay, and I got the role. Uh, and I said, okay, I'll do your play as long as I can do the costumes for the next show. And um, it sort of snowballed from there. Wow. So you, you never went to, like, New York to study acting? I didn't go to New York to study. I went to New York to act. I was um, I worked in the, I worked in the theater for uh, the same theater company for five years, and I always felt like that was my my acting education. Um, just doing show after show, I I I found I really loved it because I found it to be a place where you could, if you had sadness in your life or you know things that you were processing in your life. Um, you could take those emotions on the stage and people would just go, wow, that was so real. But it was real. You know, you yeah. you can cry and you can cry about whatever it is in your life and, and it's the character crying too. Um, 
Yes, and then I went to New York after that, and then I moved back to Los Angeles, and I, I kind of, um, I kind of just started out working, and, and I never really stopped. I was very fortunate. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you've done a lot of good work, but um, yeah, you, I was reading that uh, you had started a repertory theater company called Staircase in Santa Cruz. Yeah, I didn't start it, but I was. That was the theater company that I was involved with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm born and raised in San Mateo, and so I spent a lot of time. Oh, really? Yeah, I spent a lot of time going to the boardwalk throughout my life. <laughs> yeah, it was a fantastic place, especially at that time. It was. Um, I I think of that place as uh, <clears throat> my creation place. You know, where you yeah. start living your life and experiencing your life, not your parents, not anybody else's, but your life. <clears throat> Yeah, a few years ago, my mother and I were looking at places uh, to uh, to uh, move to and stuff, and we were looking at Santa Cruz. I was looking; I could not believe like the lack of like theater and acting that's there now. Yeah, I don't know what the story is now. I haven't been back for a few years, and when I went back, I wasn't really looking at theater. I did go by the old theater, um, mm -hmm. and you know where I had worked, and it was no longer a theater, sadly. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the story is in Santa Cruz. I know that it's uber expensive, that it's no mm -hmm. longer the quiet little place that I once lived in. Yeah, it's a very unique little um, town where a lot of partying goes on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's still happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 crazy, but. Uh, yeah, so you were at at the uh, staircase, and uh, what happened? Did they did they just disband after a while? Um, no, uh, it just it's really hard to keep a a rep company going. Um, it costs a lot. I mean, you you never saw the shows we did there, but they were they were uh, level with anything you might see on Broadway. Uh, the technical people that were working there, the, the design people, the actors. Um, actors came from all over to work there. Um, it was fantastic. And it cost a lot to put up a show. And eventually, it just got deeper in debt and couldn't uh, couldn't keep it up. And everybody left, you know. Um, they sold the theater and, um, and everyone moved on either. You know, a lot of people went to New York. A lot of people went to Los Angeles. I went to Los Angeles because I had never been to New York, and I was a little afraid of it, and I'd been a West Coast person all my life. And mm -hmm. I moved to Los Angeles, and two weeks later, I got a job and went to New York. So you can't really make any plans ever, I find. Um, <laughs> so I lived there working in theater for almost two years, and then I came back to Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah, I've talked to a lot of people who were in, who were in little theater uh, repertory companies like, like Staircase and ones that they formed and stuff. And, yeah, it's really tough to maintain it. I mean, they've told me, like, you know, that they had to, like, borrow money from, like, the city because they were using yeah. the, they were using the city's theater to put on shows or they would have to, like, you know um, – get to know people who lo who owned local businesses like a like a local bakery or something and then get to perform in their you know a party room or something like that yeah right oh yeah you're always scratching you know for, to get to get your show up borrowing from friends you know just it's, it's difficult but the creative urge is so strong people do whatever it is they need to do Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if it's your passion, then, you know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what year did you move to L.A.? I came here in 1980. 1980. And did you, um, did you um, further your acting education there by studying with somebody? I did. I worked with a fellow named Michael Shirtless uh, for a long time. Um, he's a wonderful teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh and and I, what happened was I started working. I started working right away when I got back here. And, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm lazy, but I felt like, you know, I was learning as I was going to on every new show I would do. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always been, um, 
I'm not, I don't consider myself a technical actor, mm-hmm. um, you know, like actor studio or anything like that, method yeah. acting. I'm more, uh, I'm intuitive. I kind of just feel the character emotionally and, and go from there. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I haven't taken any classes in a long time, but I'm looking at, my friend just started doing an improv class and she said they're having a lot of fun. So I might go do that. If you're, you know, you're, if you have to, do have to keep some kind of rhythm going in your life, yeah. uh, you know, learning process going. I mean, I taught for a long time too, so. Oh, nice. So I could learn by teaching as well. Yeah. Did, did, did you ever um, try to study with Milton Casellas? No, I never did. I, um, I had a lot of friends who did. I, I appreciated his work. It, it just didn't feel like it was me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have to have that, con- that connection to a teacher. Yeah. Michael Schuttler was great. I, 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 my bond with him was perfection. Um, friends that, you know, we met in the first time I went to class with him. I'm still friends with him to this day. Uh, you know, it's very powerful. Um, you, you worked, with them, you know, everybody worked together and you formed these bonds and, and they are still very strong. Mm-hmm. That's, that's great that, uh, you got, um, everlasting friendship there because it's yeah. very, it's very rare in the, the field of acting. <laughs> Yeah, it can be difficult, yes. We're your best friends while you're working on a show, right? Right. <laughs> and then you never see the person again. <laughs> well, in recent years, a lot of people have uh, been reunited with a lot of their old co-stars because, you know, they got the, uh, the, the the convention circuit with, you know, the comic cons and the horror cons and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. According... Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, according to IMDb, your first TV job was an episode of Bosom Buddies. Actually, that's not correct. Uh, my first TV job was, uh, oh, now I'm blanking on the name of it. It was a kind of semi-Western. And I had, Mills Watkins was the actor in it. Um, I'd have to look it up and see what the name of it was. But I had, uh, this, this was, I was actually working, you know, I, I came back and I didn't know anything about the business. Mm-hmm. And I asked a friend if, somebody, if I could find a job being an assistant to a casting director so mm-hmm. I could see what that was like. And she turned me on to this fellow who was taking his first job at um, Universal Studios as a, as a casting director. Right. And he wanted to bring somebody in with him. And I said, well, I can type. Uh, <laughs> I know how to do that. And so he hired me. And I said, I'll, I'll give you a year because I have other goals in mind, and um, and that was at Universal, and I had done this, uh, I had uh, signed up for this, it was called Performers Audition Showcase, mm-hmm. where you did a scene for uh, casting people, agents, uh, all kinds of people, at, at, at lunchtime, and I'd already committed to that with a partner, and mm-hmm. so I asked uh, Gary Martin, my boss, if, I, if he would be okay with me going to do that, and he said, sure. And when I went, uh, all the casting directors from Universal were there. Mm-hmm. And they all said, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, well, this is what I actually do. And uh, out of that came my first job mm-hmm. uh, on that show, which I, I wish I could remember the name of it. But I was hired for one day to say one line. Uh, it, the line was, I think it was the hamburger. Mm-hmm. And when they brought me into work, well, they got off schedule, and they kept bringing me back. I was hired as, a, as one day. I ended up working seven days, and to this day, I still get money for that show. <laughs> this is crazy. I thought, this is Hollywood. is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, are you talking uh, about... Yeah, so I, was, I can't remember it, though. I'll have to look it up. Are you, are you talking about Best of the West? Uh, so, let's see. Who is that West? That was with Joel that Higgins. Was, that was with who? Joel Higgins. Yeah, no, that was another one. Uh, that, uh, and I even remember the lines. One of the lines from that was, "Oh, I'm going to name. I'm going to whatever his name was, I, Marshall. I'm going to name the baby after you." 
And he said, what, Frank? And I said, no, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just that kind of dialogue in TV shows. <laughs> Yeah, but you did do uh, Bosom Buddies. Yes, I did. It was, that was so much fun. They were, Peter and, and Tom was so funny and so fun to be around. Um, yeah, I was, I was happy to do that. Did, did, you say, did you say to yourself, this guy Tom Hanks is special, he's going to be huge? I never said that, but I knew that. I mean, I knew that he was wonderful. I don't project, you don't project like that. It, I was, I'm always in the moment. He is fantastic. And yeah. they both they both made me laugh so hard. It was hard to work because uh, they, would, they would go out of their way to crack people up. Yeah. <laughs> they were really funny together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Peter, both of them, such nice people, such really kind and gracious people. Even then, they were young, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they knew the way to to work with other people. I know, and you know, Tom Hanks, you know, he's he's got to be the the most genuine guy in Hollywood. It's amazing how yeah. it's amazing how he's you know uh, been so grounded with his fame. Yes, yeah, yeah. Just, it is amazing. I mean, I, there aren't there aren't a lot like that. Um, I'm, I'm still privileged to work with him. Yeah, I, I just saw the Mr. Rogers movie. He's so wonderful in it. Yes, he is, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It was a great movie. Yeah. Do you, do you remember yeah. uh, when you played the biker in um, uh, some people <laughs> Some people call it Bad Manners, other people call it Growing Pains? Yeah, I, don't, I, I didn't even remember the name of it. But yes, of course, I remember it because I lied. <laughs> um, when I went in to read for the role, the the director in that moment said, "You know what? You're just too nice for this." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, really?" I said, "Give me a chance." And I went home. So I said, "I'll come back tomorrow." And he said, "Fine." So I went home and I I found an old scraggly uh, Levi jacket. I cut the sleeves off. I put grease all over it. I greased my hair back. I tied it with a bandana. I walked in, I borrowed a switchblade from my little brother, and I walked in with a beer can and a paper bag, and I <laughs> had finished it, except one little sip, and I, I picked up, the, I, I tilted the can back, I drank out of it, and then smashed it against my forehead, <laughs> put it down <laughs> on the table, started to sit down, and then went, oh, and brought out my switchblade, opened it, and laid it on the desk. I said, now, where do we start? And they <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> you're the third person I've talked to from the movie. I talked to Kimmy Robertson and um, yeah. and uh, Bridget Sienna, and they said, "Yeah, it was a crazy little movie, you know, from the Roger Corman company, and <laughs> it was a lot of fun." Yes, yeah. well, they wanted me to. How I got out of riding the motorcycle was they wanted me to ride with a child on the back. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. I'm, I would I would just die if anything happened. And they got a stunt person to come to me. <laughs> so grateful for the kid. Yeah. And you are you are very nice, and you're very good at playing bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> of course. Of course. Now comes your breakout role as Susan or uh, Roxanne uh, Melman on L.A. Law. How did you get cast yeah. in that groundbreaking show? It was, uh, it, it took a while. Um, I auditioned um, three times, um, and uh, each time I did something a little different the last time. I don't know if you remember the pilot, um, it was when um, one of the partners had died, 
and then been stuck in the uh, building right. over the holiday weekend. I remember. He was, uh, he was stuck in a position in this chair. They had to carry him out. Um, and I come into the office, and Arnie's there, and I smell something. And I have a can of, uh, which I said, Lysol. And I had emptied it out, so it just had a little bit of fishy. And I brought that to the audition, and I said, something smells. And I started spraying it all over the room. And they were laughing. And um, and then I kept going back and going back. And finally, they hired me, and they said, the reason they hired me was because I made them laugh. So uh, I was cool. I was, uh, and the other thing was, I wasn't hired as a regular on the show. I was just a possibly recurring. And mm-hmm. uh, I got an offer uh, right after I finished shooting that show. I got an offer to do, remember Mama's Family? Yep. <laughs> yeah. I got an offer to do, it was a locked in 200 episodes. Mm-hmm. And I going, all right, that sounds pretty great. That's like five years worth of work. Mm-hmm. And uh, Stephen Bosco called me, and he said, uh, Susan, I'm calling you because I'd like to know if you'd like to be a regular on the show. And I said, well, i got to tell you, I got, I got an offer to do all these shows on Mama's family, and you're just, a, you, you're not even picked up. And he goes, uh, he goes well, he said, I think we're going to make this work. So if you'll trust me. And I said, well, okay, that. <laughs> it was like so offhanded. Um, but then I didn't regret it. Well, I commend you on your risk there because, I mean, Mama's Family was an established show by then. And then, yeah. it, you know, L.A. Law was a pilot and Bochco, you know, had Hill Street Blues on at the time, which was a huge show, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I guess you knew in the back of your mind, you know, that show was popular and this one would be too. I think it was because for me it was that the writing was so good. Mm-hmm. And, and that I was hopeful. Like with Mama's Family, the, you know how the characters in, in sitcoms are locked in, right? Right. You know, that, that character will never evolve, never change. And I, I felt like this character has a chance for evolution. Um, and that's what you always hope for in a, in a role that you do, that you'll give, be given the opportunity to change. Um, so, yeah, she did. And so, no, I don't regret it, though. Though I do love stupid comedy. So I, I miss <laughs> all the family a little bit uh, in that regard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it about Roxanne that uh, you were drawn to? I think it was her vulnerability. You know, that she, who she was, was open. Um, she never hid anything. Um, she was a romantic. Uh, she she was, you know, a, a very similar to me in many regards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it wasn't a stretch to play her, uh, but it was, I liked her personally. I liked her. And when the show ended, I, I felt like I had lost a, a dear friend. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it was a very popular ensemble show in those days where everyone, oh my gosh. Every, everyone, yeah. everyone on it was successful and did movies and other shows outside of the, yeah. of the show. Was was there ever any jealousy amongst the cast members? Not a bit. Nobody. If something happened for somebody that was great, everybody applauded. It was the most generous group of people you can imagine, um, and still very loving and 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 thoughtful to each other. Uh, yeah, just a, a grand group of people. Mm-hmm. It, it refresh my memory. Why did you uh, leave before the last season? My son had been born, and I was going through a lot of emotional stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, and then uh, I just I just felt like I couldn't focus on it. Um, I had I was, I was 
become a, becoming a single parent where I thought that I was going to be co-parenting with my husband mm -hmm. and I'd gotten divorced and it just became emotionally too much. Mm -hmm. I needed to step back. Well, that, that's a better reason than, than a lot of the people um, who ended up leaving early. Um, when I talked to Michelle Green, you know, she had mentioned that uh, she had left because Rick Wallace was always making a big stink about her hair. And after yeah. after about two years. He was weird. He was weird. He is weird. Yeah. That's just, that's just a fact. It, it uh, sure yeah, sounds. I don't know. I don't know. Well, there was another, I don't remember who the other, you know, there are always a ton of producers on a set. Yeah. But their jobs not, I don't really know. Um, but there was another producer who, who was always talking about eyebrows. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think her eyebrows are quite right. I said, what? What are you, the eyebrow expert? Yeah. <laughs> Driving the, the makeup people crazy. Um, no, it was, no, I, I was sad that I wasn't going to finish it. And I did go back and do a couple shows, but I also, I needed to, I became a mother at 40. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, a single parent, but I did not think that that's what it was going to be like. So I was, I needed to be with my baby. Aww. I needed to, to be there fully and not turn him over to somebody else to watch. Um, that's beautiful. So, so that was, that was, that was the imperative for me. Um, mm. And he's a wonderful young man now. He's a, uh, doing very well and I feel like part of that was that commitment to being there for him. Oh, you're making me misty, Susan. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have a wonderful mom, too. I do. I have a wonderful mother. She drives me nuts, but then again, she's supposed to. <laughs> well, that's what our job is, too. You know that, right? Of Not course. just to love you, but to drive you crazy. <laughs> Of course, <laughs> it goes with the territory. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> We've earned that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you have a favorite episode? Um, you know, there were so many. I, I love the pilot. I love because I, I got to say Mr. Cheney's dead, and I found him. Uh, <laughs> I, I loved uh, all the stuff with, with Dan Forrick, his liar. Um, that 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 horrible, frustratingly obnoxious man. I I had there was a, a scene where we're in a restaurant and I'm on a diet and he's trying to force me to eat a chocolate souffle <laughs> and it was so painful and so uh, heart wrenching that I was crying. At, I I couldn't stop crying. Um, because all this stuff about how people manipulate you and, and are passive aggressive and, and try to sabotage you came up for me. And, and he's, afterwards he's going, I'm so sorry I was cruel to you. And I said, it's okay. I'm sorry, I made you feel bad. <laughs> um, and then there was the horrible moment of Arnie and Roxanne falling out of the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, which was so bizarre that Clover and I, when we got the script, went, what? what? Why are we in this ceiling? <laughs> uh, there, were, there were so many. There was Vincent Gardini, who played my father, who was very similar physically to my father, to my actual father. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting and, and talking and I had my hand on his hand, and, and again, I just, I was crying, and I was crying, you know, at the loss of my own father, and and uh, he was such a wonderful actor, he just broke my heart, um, and then when he passed, it was as though my father had passed again. Um, uh, so, there were, you know, a uh, hundred moments. Oh yeah, and Vincent Gardino yeah. was was a great actor. He was one of those guys, you know, that you know started, you know, 
you know, back in the old days, but didn't quite make it until he reached, you know, his 50s or 60s. Yeah, right, right. Uh, but she was so beautiful. She was so full as an actor. You just wanted to sit and absorb that. Mm-hmm. I've been very lucky. <laughs> My favorite uh, one is uh, the one where John Glover has a disfigured face. He, he won an Emmy for that. He's so yeah. brilliant in that episode. Yes. Do you remember the one with the pig? The one with the pig. Probably, probably it's yeah. been a long time. <laughs> yeah, I know we had this giant pig on the set, and the pig like broke free from this <laughs> wrangler. <laughs> we were all crowded into this hallway, and the pig was like slamming down the hallway, bouncing off the wall. <laughs> we were trying to get away from him. <laughs> Oh, my God. That must have been scary. <laughs> it was scary. The pig was like, I don't know, six, seven hundred pounds. They had to get the biggest pig they could find. Uh, and this is supposed to be a tame pig. But he wasn't trying to hurt anybody or anything. He just wanted out. Uh, <laughs> the pinball machine. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> and speaking of Emmys, you were uh, nominated four times. Were you ever disappointed you didn't win? when it was my birthday, I really felt like I should have gotten it on my birthday. Um, <laughs> but it was also, honestly, it was so um, terrifying. I, I have, in situations that I have terrible stage fright. Um, and my fear was that I would actually win <laughs> and that I would have to make a speech um, and that I wouldn't remember everybody I was supposed to think. I, I do wish that on um, the birthday, September 16th, that was one of the Emmy uh, celebrations, and I and I should have gotten it just because of that. If they were really mean, I'd say they would have given me the Emmy. <laughs> I'm sure if you had told them, you know, you know, when you yeah, found I out. Yeah, announced that earlier. <laughs> yeah, when you found out about the nomination, you should have told them, oh, by the way, that's on my birthday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What, so how was the uh, the 2002 uh, reunion movie experience? It was, it was fun. It was interesting, you know, because, you know, Dan Florek, it was just great getting together with everybody, but Dan Florek was on um, Law & Order mm -hmm. at the time, and Dick Wolf, um, you, you know, in, in, in our movie, the Dave Meyer character dies. Um, but Dick Wolf didn't want him to die. Mm -hmm. uh, he he said, I don't want my audience to be confused, like they'd be confused that playing a different character that dies. But NBC caved, and they, they, that's why there was a phone call at the last minute going, hey, Lux, this is Dave, I just want to tell you, and I hung up on him um, because he had faked it out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was fun. It was fun being away, like being at camp with, with everybody. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That um, you made a transition into horror with the TV movie of the week, Beethoven. Yes. Yes. Wow. I forgot about that one. Mm-hmm. You have uh, any good memories of that? I've got another horror movie called Bad Dreams. Yes, movie which movie. which I want to ask you yeah. about because uh, Jennifer Rubin is a friend of mine. Yes. She's mm -hmm. so sweet. Yeah, she is uh, just an absolute sweetheart. I love having her on the podcast, and she's like a sister to me. Like we text each other at least once a month, and I make her laugh. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I love hearing that. Yeah, she's going through a tough time right now, but she's uh, doing is really she good. Okay. Yeah, she's. Oh, she's a friend on Facebook. I should message her. Yeah, she's uh, you know she 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 uh, does she teaches her her swimming and um, her uh, sister is not doing very well. She did a um, a crowdfunding thing for her. Oh, I'll have to look into it. Yeah. Look but do you have uh, do you have any any memories of uh, Beethoven? Um, not. Yeah, not really. I that was Jim Sticking, and uh, who else was in that? Tim um, Matheson. Was that? I don't remember who else was in that. Tim Matheson, yeah. Bar Barbara Billingsley, Jeff Conway. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had 
mother, you know, it's like we're in Canada, we're all having too much fun, partying a little bit too much. <laughs> so I don't really remember the movie, but <laughs> I think it was a, I think a great time was had by all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how did... Um... That was a time when all the movies were being shot in Vancouver. Yeah. So we everybody would be there at the same time, uh, and it would just turn it, honestly, a big, like, a party. Be a party every night. Yeah. Um, it was shameful. <laughs> yeah. A lot of those movies of the weeks, you know, were shot in Canada, and you see so many great actors in it that you never saw again, and then you find out they were just local Canadian actors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did a movie, uh, I can't think of his name, where I, um, oh, now I can't even think of what his name was, or the name of the movie. Um, I think it was the one where we pushed, where we killed young women. Mm -hmm. um, my son, my son and I, for insurance money. I don't know. There's been a million of them. <laughs> but, how, but how did bad dreams uh, come to you? They just offered that. Um, that was really fun. Uh, I I think that was before Beethoven, wasn't it? Or was it my mom? Uh, I don't know which one came first, but I know Beethoven came out first. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was just a, it was a great group of people, a fun scenario, and... And I actually got killed three times in the movie because they couldn't figure out how they wanted to kill me. <laughs> and um, and then uh, they ended up, you know, out, out the window with me. Mm -hmm. And they said, um, how do you feel about jumping out the window? And I said, okay. Uh, so <laughs> they put a big, you know, one of those big air things down below. And, and I jumped out, uh, pushed out, fell out. And, uh, and the, some people gave me a big, and uh, so I'm an honorary stunt person. Wow. <laughs> the things you do when you're younger, right? But you go, today I go, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, no more. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for me. Thank you. You're a professional. <laughs> Richard Lynch is so menacing as Harris oh. in that movie. Oh, my God. Yeah, he is. He is powerful. Mm hmm And E.G. Daly, she's a sweetheart. I've met her. Yes. Oh, yeah. She was so sweet. She was so terrific. Dean Cameron. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I tried I tried getting him on the podcast. Oh, my God. He's a funny guy. Just, um, he's, he, for, first he said, first he said, can you, um, can, I, I hope I'm not being a dick, but can you get back to me the beginning of next year? <laughs> 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 and then I did. And then he's, and then he said something like, I don't, I don't even know uh, what I'm going to say, you know, and I'm like, well, I, I'm going to ask you questions. <laughs> and then I, I don't know if I'll ever get him on, if he's going to, if he's going to be that way, but, but, you know, he's yeah, a funny that's guy. Funny. That's too bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say. That's, that's, that's funny. Yeah. Like you have to make a speech, right? Yeah. Like you have to make a speech. <laughs> Bruce Abbott, he's a great guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I met him at a convention. We had like a five-minute conversation. He was very nice to me. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a yeah. good... That's I a, think, who's the director of that movie? Danny Andrews, was that the name? Let me look. Let me look here. Not Danny Andrews. Danny. I, I should know it offhand. Um... It was Andrew Fleming. Andrews, yeah, I got the Andrews part on me backwards. Yeah, I don't, you know, I haven't heard from him or about him in a long time. I don't know whether he's still directing or, um, or what. He was, he was terrific. He did a really great job with that movie. Yeah, but he did that comedy in the late 90s about, about the Watergate scandal. It was called Dick. Oh, right. Oh, right. That's a f funny movie, yeah. And he also did The Craft uh, with the witches. Okay, so he's still working. Yeah, I, I just looked. Uh, he's he's actually directing a series called Emily in Paris right now. Uh-huh. 
So yeah, he's still directing, but he's doing TV now. He hasn't called me in for anything. <laughs> hey, now I'm upset. <laughs> Don't lose hope. He could. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's still available. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> you got to be in a movie with Gene Wilder called Funny About Love. Oh, yeah, that was so much fun. That was so much fun. Robert Prosky, he, he was a doll. Um, yeah, great actor. Yeah, yeah, just a terrific actor. And Gene Wilder is like, he's, 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 he's not very outgoing, yeah. you know? He didn't really talk a lot to other people. Not just me, but everybody. <laughs> Do the work and be funny while he was working, and then kind of like be mm, not not accessible, but not really mm, reaching out to anybody. That's what I heard. I heard he, I heard he was the sweetest guy in the entire world. But when he was working on a movie, he could be pretty aloof, you know, because he took his job very seriously. Um, I'm letting me more direct with that. I know, which is bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was a good director. Um, but it was, you know, it was interesting being directed by Spock. Um, Mr. Spock. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he was very, very clear. Yeah. This was the first movie that Gene made after Gilda passed. Yeah. He probably must have been very depressed. Yeah, also, yeah, I've been, you know, why he was, um, you know, quiet. Yeah, it must have been uh, a key factor there. Yes, yes. You did, you did an episode of uh, Third Rock from the Sun? I did, um, and, uh, and that was hilarious. Yeah. This is hilarious. I know shows like that don't exist anymore. It reminded me of, you know, shows like My Favorite Martian and I Dream of Jeannie and Mark and Mindy. You know, shows like that don't even exist anymore. No. No, it's a completely different time now. Um, it was better in the old days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, still, there's still a lot of good shows. Like, I, I love the show Fleabag. Mm-hmm. Um, that show just cracks me up. Um, but um, the shows that I'm watching are more on on the streaming channel. Um, they're more interesting, more uh, unique um, than much of what's on the regular networks. Oh, yeah, and I, I, I heard. Yeah, I mean, I watch some of the stuff that's on Netflix and Amazon, and I see what they're doing and stuff. I just I, I don't know you know the the numbers of if you know they're they're getting you know a lot of uh, people watching and stuff you know but it, it would be it would be good to see you know those kind of shows on TV as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know it's interesting. I guess there's something for everyone. Um, it's it's uh, just all your taste. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got a different taste, for sure. But uh, mm-hmm. did, did John Lithgow and uh, French Stewart make everyone laugh on that show? Did what, Jerry? Did John Lithgow and French Stewart make everyone laugh on that show? Oh, yeah, French Stewart. Yeah, John is such, such a nice uh, gentleman. He's a gentleman. Um, very embracing. French Stewart is just a Looney Tunes guy, but also so sweet. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and I haven't seen him for a while, but we used to hang out. Um, and then, um, uh, who else was there? Oh, it, who else was on that show? Um, well, it was Kristen Stewart. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And she's on Mom now. Right. And wasn't, um, wasn't Jane Curtin on the show a little bit? Yes, that's right, she was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh, that's good. I was I was reading in 2000, um, you started an interior design business. I, I was, it was, 
it was kind of a design organization, like, you know, helping people. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't do it for money. I just basically <laughs> did it because I like telling people what to do. I used to <laughs> idea that I wanted to set up a booth, like, um, for, uh, you know, called Ask Susan, and mm-hmm. that you could ask me something and I would tell you to do whatever I felt was the right thing, like what's the answer to your question, um, for a nickel. Remember, like Lucy in, in, uh, in Peanuts? Yeah. <laughs> um, I would sit there and I would tell people what what I thought they should do. Um, I never followed through on it, and I'm really sad about that. <laughs> So you're not do, you're not doing it anymore. No, not really. I um, I'm more about um, minding my own business now. <laughs> I'm more. It's it's hard work, and I I really just am at a point in my life where I don't want to work that hard anymore. I yeah. just want to relax and work, mm-hmm. work when I can, work when I do, and, and uh, not. Well, I would. I don't think I would be. I would want to do a full time series anymore mm-hmm. um, because of the hours and I'm. I enjoy my life right now. I'm. I'm doing a bunch of stuff on my house and and I like that. Did, did you ever? Go, friends. Yeah. Did you ever go through periods where um, acting rules dried up? Um. Yeah. It goes on and off. I mean, now I don't work as much anymore, basically because I, I think I'm older and there, there are not as many roles for older women that don't involve making some crude sexual innuendo and thinking that's funny. <laughs> um, so, um, I'm, you know, I mean, honestly, there are roles that I've been offered that I would go, what? So, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I think it's harder. There was a, there were a few years when my son was in school and I was a big part of the school. I ran my parents' association and mm-hmm. I, I think they dried, you know, I dried up because I wasn't paying as much attention. You know, I wasn't, I sort of lost my feelings of, uh, oh, work was the most important thing to me. Um, and, uh, and that makes a difference. If you're not out there, you know, working at getting work, then, uh, you know, people think you're not interested. Yeah. Um, but I, I like to work. I just don't want to do it. I want to, I don't want to do anything that's just for work. I just want to have fun. You know, I've been, I do three shows on mom and I love the character. I just love her and I, I'm going to go back and do more in the spring and, and I, mm-hmm. um, I see that kind of character that's just goofy and comes out of nowhere. I, I would do that. Anytime. Um, I don't really want to do any big, like, um, sad roles. Yeah. I just want to have fun. Oh, that, that's, a, that's a, a good thing to say because, I mean, you've done so many great stuff, you know, and you're at the point now, you know, where you just want to relax, and if something good comes along, you'll take it. Yeah, if there's a great opportunity um, one that's fulfilling and means something and then I can go, yeah, that's what I want. Uh, absolutely. But if not, you know, I've got plenty to keep me busy. <laughs> Do you have any upcoming um, uh, uh, projects uh, now that you can uh, plug? Well, I've been working on for a while. I wrote with a friend um, a um, children's uh, animated uh, pilot. Um, and um, we're pitching it to um, the networks, uh, you know, Nickelodeon, Disney, Amazon, everybody, and uh, getting positive feedback, but with you know changes that they would like to see in it. So we're kind of reworking it some, and that's been really fun because it's based on a character mm-hmm. that I created years and years and years ago in children's theater. Um, so. It was a character that stuck with me all that time because I really felt like she had a value. Uh, I used to take her to, um, she would perform at the improv. Uh, <laughs> I used to take her to do like children's benefits. Right. Um, 
and uh, and do the sketches with her and stuff. So uh, I, I'm hoping that something will come out of that. It's a really good story. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I hope that comes into fruition for you because. Thank you, and if it does, I will let you know. Oh, that would be great because, you know, uh, so many people in the last year and a half or two years have told me about projects that they've been trying to get made. And we live in such a, a weird time now where it's hard to distribute content, um, you yeah. know, that we want to get on, on a national level and stuff. But I've there have been a few people who have come back on and told me that, you know, it's getting that whatever they're doing is getting released. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad because I want everyone to release, you know, some really good content. Well, that's sweet of you, too, to care, to be invested in it. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. So, Susan, there's a game that I like to play with my guests. It's this silly little slumber party game. Okay, and, I'm not very good at games, but go ahead. <laughs> well, no one wins. Just everyone. It's, oh. it's, just, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Does anybody lose? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So it's, slum, it's silly slumber party questions, and how this works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me that exact same question, and I answer it. Okay. Susan, are you ticklish? Yes. Are you ticklish? I am very ticklish. In fact, <laughs> I am baby ticklish. I, I'll just tell you, I was once doing a play, and mm. a friend of mine was in the audience, and every time I'd face in his direction, he would take his fingers at, like he was going, kick, 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 and I would crack up. <laughs> so you don't even have to touch me to make me be tickled. That's interesting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you still talk to that actor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was a friend. He wasn't actually on stage. He was in the audience. Oh. Um, yes, and yes, we're still good friends, even though he was, he was devilish and despicable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, <we're friends. laughs> Um, what is your favorite part of the body? My favorite part of the body is the brain. What's your favorite part of the body? I have always loved the belly button. <laughs> yes. It's just a lid collector. Yes, it sure is. I'm just obsessed <laughs> with it. Uh, what color are your toenails painted? No, no polish. What color are your toenails painted? No polish. Okay, good. Um, well, I'm not good. You can have them color whatever you want. I do that in the summertime. Uh-huh. Um, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Is there a what? A stinky smell. Uh, there is spirulina. Is there a stinky smell that makes you gag? Wait, what is spirulina? Spirulina is like, um, it's like pond scum. It's like algae. Oh, uh, yeah. But it's, it's formulated into a supplement that you actually take. Um, it's okay taking one pill, but if you actually put your nose into the bottle, mm -hmm. you probably vomit. Oh. So. <laughs> so, yes. Um, you? Uh, farts and feet. Farts and feet? Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, that's, that's generally true for a lot of people. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had pretty bad athlete's foot after I got out of the hospital from my car accident a few years ago. Oh, are you better now? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a day-by-day -day process, but I'm a lot better now. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. And, um, do you, Susan, do you like jokes? I do. I got some pretty funny jokes. Okay. Everybody knows the old nursery rhyme. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many kids she didn't know what to do. What did her right leg say to her left leg? I don't know what. Nothing. They never met. <laughs> That's silly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. I love that one. You know, <laughs> you know the difference between a golf ball and a G-spot? Mm, no. It takes a man 20 minutes to find the golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad I could make you laugh, Susan. <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. Mm-hmm. And well, this was a pleasure for me. I'm, I'm glad you reached out to me. Oh, I'm, I'm glad I reached out to you, too. You're such a sweet lady. And Thank you. And, yeah, let me know when that project happens. And, uh, you can come, I will. You can come back on and promote it. I will. know if it doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can come back on and promote it. And That's right. Or just, like, cry because it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be praying for you. Thank you so much, honey. I will for you, too. Okay. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you too. I hope it's a wonderful one. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Susan Rutan. Ain't she a sweetheart? She's a very sweet, humble lady. But far removed from her characters, but has a sense of humor like her characters nevertheless. Um, If you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, add me as a friend on Facebook, join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past, because the present sucks. Later, dudes.